Hi there, it's Jeff with another video on financial economics. Let's spend a few minutes thinking about digital money. Well, what is digital money? Well, essentially, it's uh, also known as digital currency. It's any form of money that exists only in electronic form. So unlike, unlike traditional uh, cash, physical cash, like your notes and coins, digital money cannot be seen or touched. It's stored and transferred electronically through computers, through your smartphones and other digital devices. And of course, it's becoming increasingly prevalent. The rapid growth of e-commerce, digital banking and new financial technologies and payments platforms. So digital wallets form part of the story here. Mobile payment apps and wallets, PayPal, uh, Alipay, Apple Pay, Google Pay, digital banking apps. They allow you to store digital money balances and, of course, make, hopefully, secure online payments. This is interesting. This is Apple Pay usage either for online payments or at point of sales in shops and things in various countries. And the data is for November 2023. In the UK, Apple Pay usage is now 70% in stores, restaurants or other points of sale, for example, in the supermarket or, or the corner shop. And it's nearly 40% of online purchases. And the UK actually, is, I think, has the highest figure for use of Apple Pay in stores, restaurants or other points of sale. Uh, figures obviously vary quite a bit here. Down in Poland, for example, it's only 15-16%. So penetration of Apple Pay much, much lower. And likewise in China. Uh, mobile wallets in 2022 accounted for about half, just under a half, of all global e-commerce payment transactions. So your digital wallet was by far the most popular online payment method in 2022. And of course, the forecast is that's going to rise still further forecast is that by 2026, 54% of e-commerce payments will be done by digital wallets. Credit cards falling from 20 to 16, debit cards down towards 10%, and, and others, in, others in there. Uh, so digital wallets, really important. Cryptocurrencies would also come under digital money. Cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin and Ethereum. And really interesting, and some of you may well be following this, some central banks are now exploring the idea of issuing digital versions, digital versions of their national currencies. That might be worth a look at as a little research topic if you're interested in this aspect of financial economics. Essentially, digital money is being driven by convenience. Just as you know, I mean, I was using my smartphone two or three times just this morning. It's incredibly convenient for conducting transactions. You take away the need for physical cash or visits to the cash point machine. Uh, it's a nice link with globalisation. The digital money facilitates much more rapid cross-border payments, including uh, the transfer of remittances, for example, from one country to another. One would hope that digital money systems are more robust in terms of security through encryption, authentication, uh, keeping financial information uh, more secure, and reducing low and cutting the risk of fraud, fraud theft and counterfeiting. The pandemic, of course, was an accelerant. So it really drove this process of using digital payment systems, contactless payments, partly partly to reduce the risk of virus transmission. But this process was already underway uh, well before the, the pandemic hit. What about the drawbacks of digital money? I mean, it's a rapidly evolving field. It's, it's changing the way we think about and use money. It's playing an increasingly important role in our lives, but there are also some downsides. Some types of digital money, cryptocurrency, obviously a good example, are extremely volatile. The price fluctuates significantly over short periods of time. Well, here's a good example, Ethereum. This coin was created in, what, 10 years ago now, I think, or 8 to 10 years ago. I think it was actually created in Switzerland by a small group of people, including a Russian-Canadian who who created Ethereum after the world of Warcraft weakened his in-game character. But you can see just how volatile the price of Ethereum has been. Uh, regulation is important. So the regulatory landscape is still evolving uh, across both nationally and internationally. That can create uncertainty for consumers and businesses. And I think really importantly, there's a digital divide. Not everyone has easy access to the latest technology or the infrastructure needed to use digital money. So in many ways, although this is becoming ubiquitous, 
there will still be millions of people in the UK and hundreds of millions of people around the world who don't necessarily have access to the potential benefits of digital money. Just a quick word on SWIFT or ZWIFT, the Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunication. That's not a payment system itself, but SWIFT is a secure messaging network that basically allows cross-border um, financial transactions between countries who are members of the system. So it's basically a communication black backbone. And it allows banks, for example, in particular commercial banks and others, to, to send and receive instructions for cross-border payments. And just very quickly, this is uh, SWIFT payments by currency just over the last four years. You can see here that the dollar and the euro, uh, then sterling, they dominate SWIFT payments across across currencies. So the majority of payments using SWIFT are US dollars. As you'd expect, in a way, it's the world's reserve currency. Hey, there we go. I hope you enjoyed this quick look and introduction to digital money. Thanks for joining in. Take care and see you soon.